Alright, back again. Today I've got a special, or actually more of a promised video for you guys. This is going to be upgrading the Dell Mini 10 netbook. Now, before I start, there is one thing I'd like to mention. You probably saw that in the last video I showed how on eBay there was there were copies of the Windows 7 Starter Edition available. Well, I was going to buy one. I, bu I bought one. And, um, and it, it came on the form of a universal disk. But then, I realized I had just wasted my money. Well, I probably already spoiled it for you, but when I when I um, was doing some work today, when I came home from work today, I was greeted to this. Yes, somebody apparently heard me talking about Windows 7 Starter, and now I have five copies of Windows 7 Starter Edition. <laughs> You're probably going to tell me, Ben, we need to drive you to the hospital, buddy. But, no, it's true five copies from some guy in Canada and so whoever sent me these I guess thanks but I didn't really need five copies um I guess I'll I, I guess I'll keep them and if I ever have a computer that you know I could probably use the starter edition I'll use them but yeah these are legit discs for Windows 7 starter although if you can read that, it says it has to be distributed within Latin America and the Caribbean. Now, that probably doesn't mean... And then it also says in the front here that it has to be activated in Latin America and the Caribbean. So, But I'm sure through registry hacking I could get it to activate here. And who knows, Microsoft has gotten a little less strict... Is not as strict with activation as they used to be. But yeah, five freaking copies... Plus a universal disk and key, so now I've got six copies of Windows 7 Starter Edition. Um, I know Starter Edition is not the most praised version of Windows, but... Yeah, I mean, there's one, two, three, four, and five. So that's five copies. And these are official copies. Again, these are official OEM copies that you would find... I don't even know if you could buy these on Amazon when they were new, but... Good God. Um, and, of course, Starter is only 32-bit, but... <laughs> I just wanted to, I guess, thank the person in Canada who sent me these... Some anonym, I guess it was some anonymous viewer who sent me this and, I guess, got my address through my um, Google Plus profile. But, still. Uh, thanks, I guess, for the Windows 7 Starter copies. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to use these on, but yeah, these are legit copies. So now I have five legit copies and one questionable copy. So, now that that's out of the way, on to the video. Okay, so here we go with installing Windows 7 Starter Edition. I'm going to go ahead and restart the netbook. There really aren't any files on here that I really care about, just some web links. Say hi to my cat again. And we're going to go ahead and boot this thing into Windows 7. And there's a shot of me without a shirt on because it's getting very hot down here in Florida. Okay, we want CD drive. Press any key to boot from CD or DVD. And, as if you haven't seen this screen enough, Windows is loading files. One thing I really am going to have a problem with is this touchpad during the installation. And one thing you'll notice is um, that with Windows 7, you'll have sometimes, if your um, screen resolution is below 1024 by 768, you'll instead get the Windows Vista loading screen instead of the traditional starting Windows screen that you get in... Um, Windows 7 if your screen resolution is above 1024 by 768. This is a 1024 by 600 display. Alright, so we'll go ahead and select English US. Install now. Classic setup is starting. Yep, and this is indeed Windows 7 Starter. 
So we'll go ahead and agree to the EULA. And we can't do an upgrade because we're upgrading from XP. So let's go ahead and get the drive formatted and install Windows 7 Starter Edition in place of Windows XP. So sit back and relax. Okay, so the system just restarted from uh, from the uh, final part of the Windows setup. And it's now doing the traditional setup is checking video performance. So it only took about 20 minutes to install, so really nothing much. And, um, yeah, I guess we'll go through the initial setup prompts again, and uh, you probably have seen what they look like from the Windows Vista Home Basic installation video, so I'll probably just skip through this and come back when we're at the desktop. There we go, Windows 7 Starter. Who doesn't remember this operating system? Alright, I'll come back when we're at the desktop. Okay, so I went ahead and went through the um, prompts, and it's now preparing my desktop. So in a second here, we're going to go ahead and get Nineite installed and uh, everything else, or get do Nineite and install Chrome, MS Security Essentials, etc., etc., and uh, get this computer up and running. See down there. It's pure evil. Uh, it's about almost nine o'clock, and I'm already getting tired. I know some people do this at two in the morning, and I'm just not one of those people that can do that. It's taking a little longer than usual to get to the desktop, but hey, this is an only an Atom N270. There we go. Oh, it got the audio driver too. Look at that. Got all the drivers, didn't it? Did it seriously get every single driver? Because if it did, I am going to be pretty damn surprised. Is it ready? Yeah, it's ready. Alright, well, let's go ahead and get some drivers installed in this thing, and we'll come back when the driver installation is done. Of course, there's always something, so, of course, the you can never be too confident with, um, with manufactured drivers sometimes. I tried the uh, Dell driver, and of course, it was a lemon driver. It didn't even, it did not work at all. It said it, the driver was corrupted. I got a parameter is incorrect error. And then the system would be would get a BSOD on startup. So I just I forgot to record that part because I was too busy swearing in the background, but I was able to fix that by booting into safe mode and uninstalling the lemon driver and then just rebooting, getting the driver from Synaptics, which worked fine, it lo which looks like it worked fine. And uh, now we should I'm going to be recording the Windows 7 starter startup time. Our next order of business is to see if Windows will even activate in the US. Doubtful, but you never know. I mean, you can always try phone activation, and worst comes to worst if it says it needs to be in the Caribbean or Latin America, I can just use a VPN and spoof my IP address to uh, make it think it's in a country like Panama or Mexico or something like that so it'll activate correctly. For a netbook though, and an Atom N270 and a gigabyte of RAM, it actually doesn't take too long to start up. Although, and it's already getting Windows updates, which is wonderful. I'll need to install Windows 7 Service Pack 1 on this machine because this does not have Service Pack 1. But yeah, then I can just add my icons. You can see that was a very quick um, boot up. Okay, let's see. Your Synaptics pointing device provides all the functionality. Yeah, so it's just telling me about the glory of the Synaptics device. Now what's it want to do? 
Is it going to run the taskbar icon? There she is. All right, we got the taskbar icon too. Although one thing Windows is Windows 7 is notorious for is telling you your battery is no good. I can confirm that that is indeed 100% BS because when this computer had Windows XP, the battery worked just fine and held a full charge. So I don't know why Windows is telling me I have a defective battery. But it seems like Windows 7 is the only operating system that has that error message about your battery being defective. Anyways, enough about that. I already ran 9 nights, so let's try activation. Attempting online activation. will probably fail, but let's see what happens. Shit. Of course. It can't be used in the U.S., but that's okay, because that's why we have phone activation. And we can always spoof the IP address, too. So let me go ahead and get the command for phone activation, and we'll figure that out. So I'm reading, and apparently to activate Windows by phone, if you can't activate over the internet, you go to the run box and you type slui.exe4, and you get the result up here. And then we can, and then it should give us the prompt to do phone activation. So we'll go ahead and try phone activation. And I may just have to get a live representative and tell them and just tell a white lie saying I'm going to ship this to a guy in Panama. So let me go ahead and get my phone and I'll come back if this works. So phone activation worked no problem. So apparently if you happen to buy a copy of Windows 7 with activation restrictions, you can simply bypass those restrictions by doing phone activation. And I, because you can see I've been able here, let me adjust the camera here, you can see I got the confirmation ID and Windows is now activated, so there really is, so they really can't, I guess I was about to ask myself, how do you think they can tell if you, if you're activating in the U.S. if you do it by phone? I mean, the worst that you do is you call and you wait for a live representative, and then you just tell them you're shipping it to someone in a country in Latin America or the Caribbean, like, say, you're shipping it to Antigua or someplace, or to Puerto Rico or something like that. So, activation restrictions really aren't that restrictive. <laughs> Well, anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video of me installing Windows 7 Starter on this Dell Mini 10. And I'll see you guys in the next video. And I've got plenty more, so stay tuned.